Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kizma. I am Kizma. I'm so glad you're here. And today's topic is gossip. Well, hey there, Nick. Hey there, Kizma. That was a very simple word for what we're going to talk about today. Gossip. Gossip. It's more than gossip, but it actually does come down to gossip and what gossip does. It's an interesting word. Um, it's got that kind of charge around it. You know, it's yeah. like, ugh. it's just got kind of like a ugh feeling. About it does it, have an know? ugh feeling. And I think, though, as well, you know, when we dive in, we'll look at how many people may be doing this thing called gossip without realizing it, or at least getting the the effects of gossip without realizing it. Well, I'd agree. And it's just something that has really permeated uh, our our way of interacting with one another. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's like we've been trained into and it's just been so uh, ubiquitous, ubiquitous in our world. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things, that, what I think is interesting about this topic is the flip side of this is one of the biggest fears that I have encountered um, across the board with people and in, in, uh, doesn't matter the industry that they're from. It doesn't matter the level of success, male, female, doesn't matter. One of the biggest fears that I've ever encountered is the fear of what other people are going to think about you. Yes, it is. You're right across the board. And any any of our listeners agree, just put like, go to those show notes and go like, yep, I have experienced the fear of what other people think of me. <laughs> it's, uh, it's crippling. It is. It's a crippling fear. Mm -hmm. And what it does, what's interesting about that fear is how it entraps you in a particular way of being, doing, and having. And the reason for that is because if you step outside that box, you risk judgment, uh, scorn, and rejection. Mm -hmm. And what's so sad about it is that everything that you ever wanted and all the things that you want to shift and change in your life are outside of that box. Oh, that's so true. They're all outside of the box. Yeah, right. And you have to be willing to risk that fear, that judgment, uh, scorn, rejection, whatever else that people may mm-hmm. judge about you mm-hmm. in order to uh, step into that space for yourself. So true. So true. You know, I, I it's like if we look at public speaking, there's it's been said that one of the highest levels of fear for people is public speaking. But it's it's not speaking. People speak in public all the time. You go out to the store, you're at the bank, you say hello, you're on an elevator. It is the fear of what people are going to think and say when you're standing in front of them and speaking. Absolutely. And which brings us back to why does that fear exist? And and it's obvious. When you really take a second and stop and think about it, it's so obvious uh, and it's because people have that fear exactly because we are so entrained to gossip. Mm, and so that so. that is, I mean, ev- just about every human being will do this on some level. Mm. And the more that you do and engage in gossip, mm-hmm. of course, your fear of that coming back to you is going to be embedded Ah. on a deep level because that's exactly what you're putting out there. So you're saying in a way that your soul, your spirit, your higher self, your inner self, your inner child, your like whatever knows at some level that when you say things about people that aren't really very nice, it's going to come back and bite you in the butt. Well, how many times have we seen that happen? (laughs) I mean, think about it. You know, when, when you just meet somebody for the first time, and they start just unloading about some person, mm-hmm. you know, some other person. You just met this person and all of a sudden they're talking smack about somebody that, <laughs> you know, both of you know. What, you know, the first, I don't know about anybody else, but the first thing that I think of is like, man, if that person's doing that with me and I'm a total stranger, I yeah. wonder what that person is going to be saying about me. Totally. Totally. You know, so my, my, my red flags go off, like the sirens are going off in my head, like, bam, like I, I'm watching, yeah. I'm watching what I say. Proceed with caution. Very carefully, because I can just assume that anything that I say is going to be projected out. Exactly. You know? Well, if there's this innate understanding and knowing um, that gossip is not such a great thing, then why... Why is it so rampant? Why do people go there? Why is it that thing to like hang out at break or at the water cooler or drinks after and just 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 
rail on people. Why is that? That's a great question. I think there's a lot of different answers to that. Mm. Actually, I think it's it's layered in a lot of different ways. But, you know, at the core of it is um, just how entertaining it is mm. and how distracting it is from the things that are going on in ourselves. I think it's distracting. Maybe there's some sort of sick entertainment in it, but I think it's more that well, let's take it to the celebrity thing. I mean, we've talked about this before. You go and you, you know, those magazines at the checkout, I'll see those like Brad and Angelina and whatever. I'm like, why, why is this so popular? And then I think, well, people look at celebrities and when their lives blow up, they're like, oh, I must not be so bad off. Like if Brad and Angelina can get a divorce, then my, you know, lack of a relationship isn't such a bad big deal. I I think that's part of it. And Mm -hmm. I think there's a deeper layer of, uh, the, the deeper embedded beliefs that people carry about, um, successful people, Mm. right? So of course a celebrity, right? We see these people Ah. as successful. Um, we assume that they have money, although that's not always the case, Not always, Um, but we see that success and we think they must've done something dirty to get it. Oh, that's and so sad. what we don't, but how many times have you heard that? Yeah. If you show somebody a big st- stack of money, the first thing that they think is freaking drug dealer. Oh my God. Somebody did a drug deal. Yeah. Right. And, and it just pops out of their heads. Or they did something illegal or they like, they were in Vegas all night long, just like ripping off the casino. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so <laughs> what it does, like when we see that happen is it speaks to that kind of sense of justification, like, oh yeah, I knew it. I knew they had something coming. So in essence, this feeds what is basically the need to be right, that in order to be successful, you got to do something wrong or you got to cheat or steal or do, or you're just, or if you're successful, it's all going to come falling down. I think that's more it, right? So then people that's another hold one. back. Yeah. So, and if this resonates with you guys, like, please like go, go that little chat thing below on our show notes, because this is a big deal. If there's some piece in you where you're like, well, I can work really hard and create success, but uh, the other shoe's going to drop. It's all going to come falling down. Like that is a lower vibratory belief that then you're looking for proof in these other people's lives and creating gossip and throwing out stuff and it's not serving you. It it will then actually create exactly what you're worried about experiencing. Well, yeah. And so the mind has like let's assume that you have the belief right which Mm -hmm. is a very very common belief oh man i'm doing good Mm -hmm. just waiting for the other shoe to drop i can't tell you how many times i've heard that and so then what the mind does is go out into the world Mm -hmm. and look for circumstances in order to support that belief and 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 certainly there's no we don't have a hard time finding evidence of that (laughs) you know you've got sports people oh you've got politicians politicians. you've got country leaders you've got cnn and fox i I mean it's insane it's just rampant on the planet right now it's really inexcusable yeah in so many ways you know there's it's not hard to find the uh, super family values politician that all of a sudden gets caught with all sorts of <laughs> super disturbing um, content on their PC. It's not hard to find the, you know, the actor who's cheating on his wife. It's right. not hard to find uh, any of these things that prove that, oh my gosh, like this person is creating success and now they're getting what they right. deserve. Right, right. Now they're paying the price for it. And it doesn't have to be this way. Right. And and so that loop, it Mm -hmm. keeps looping and it keeps reinforcing in the mind. And then once it's continues to be reinforced in the mind, then that is what a person will continue to create in their lives. Mm -hmm. So this is ultimately, I think the human experience is really just about deprogramming all Mm -hmm. of the weird stuff that we got, that we picked up along the way. Mm Mm-hmm. So I that, agree. you know, to get out of that, but this, this sense of gossip around it becomes, mm. it's it just so painful. It, it's everywhere. So let's, let's get to the real thing of, of why we wanted to share this with all of our listeners is that when, okay, you have the ability when people are throwing words at you. And I know those of you have listened, you know, how we teach, you know, what we, our beliefs, you don't have to take that right. When someone is saying mean things to you, I'm not saying it's okay. And I'm not saying roll over. But generally, it's their gig. So you can accept it or you can be like, no, thanks, not taking on your crap, Mr. or Mrs. However, what I think that many people 
I don't want to say fail, but what they're not putting their attention to is the words, are the words coming out of their mouth and their thought flow to other people. So if I understand you correctly, uh, it's the attention to detail and what your words are actually creating. Yeah, we're really focused on what people are thinking about us, saying about us, saying to us and saying and in doing to us. And I understand that. And that's important. It's especially important when you're willing to, you know, increase your, your frequency enough where you just like, oh, be objective. Like, yeah, man, I don't care. However, when we look at what we are putting out there to other humans and to ourselves, I think that's where the golden opportunity is. And, you know, we've been studying a lot of this work and, as you know, excited to put a little plug in for my mindset to get your prosperity course coming up very soon. It, it, there's a whole module dedicated to this law of increase. Mm. And the law of increase is holding this potentiality and possibility that you can expand the wealth, the health, the happiness, the love of any human you come in contact with simply by your words, your thoughts, and your attitude. That's powerful. It is powerful. That's powerful. Why would somebody do that? Wouldn't wouldn't that mean there's less for me? Ah, uh, no, <laughs> because obviously the we're we're talking about an infinite existence here, and this is something else. Like you and I were talking about the other day is um, finding the fine, finding the infinite in the finite, right? So we're if we going into the deep. oh, we're just going to the deep end. But it was like, you know, when we look at money, for instance, if someone just kind of like, oh, it's just a dollar. Well, when you poop on your dollar, you you don't see where that dollar can multiply and magnify into a hundred thousand, ten thousand, a million dollars. You miss that opportunity because you're not seeing it. You're just like stopping at the dollar. So by the same token, when you're not seeing how one word or one thought or one wish towards another human can multiply not just their increase but your own. You're missing, I think, the highest teaching. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you're well. You're misusing the highest teaching. I think you're misusing is, is, that's is, good is, is mm-hmm. the way to put it. You know, mm-hmm. because what you're really doing is you're creating exactly what you don't want in your life. Exactly. So what's fascinating about that is, like, let's take that in, in, if if it's okay to kind of take that into a very like a just a physical, tangible mm. um, example. So sure. let's say you cut yourself. Right. Right. And you focus on the cut and all the things that's like wrong with you because you have this cut. Mm. Now, at the same time, what you're ignoring is the millions and millions of functions that your body is performing automatically without even thinking about it in order to automatically start repairing that cut. So true. So somebody gets wrong, you know, like they get ill or something is happening with their body that is not what they want. And they Mm -hmm. tend to focus. We are very problem oriented to focus on that problem and ignore all of the things that are actually working in Mm -hmm. order to try and solve that. And then all of a sudden you've got all these circumstances that are like trying to help out like, hey, hey, I'm over here. Right. And they're totally not able to do that because you're not paying any attention to that. Exactly. So it's pretty fascinating, I think. And then we do that out with our relationships as well with other people. Exactly. You know? And I think you said it earlier too. It's like, it's a, that, this whole gossip, this whole entanglement into other people's drama and trauma is a distraction to one's own path, journey, increase in love, health, wealth, whatever it is, it's, it's a distraction away from what you could actually be creating for yourself. Yes, it really is. It really is. But is that, is that really the, the, is that like, why, why, why would you want to be so distracted? Like, why would you want to be distracted? I believe it's because people, and again, would love to hear from our listeners. I believe it's because people do not understand, you know, some of the teachers refer to this law of mind action that when you criticize or speak poorly or throw anger spears to someone else, you don't realize that through this law of mind action, you're actually asking for and creating those same things to happen to you. It's like the boomerang effect, Mm. right? So it's like, I think there has not been, my belief is there's not been enough attention to this, magnificent way of being or the exact opposite. 
So people somehow feel a sense of superiority when they can just condemn and criticize and throw out these anger spirits to other people. They feel a sense of empowerment. But in actuality, everyone, you're diminishing your own power, empowerment, field, and your own prosperity. Oh, you're poisoning your environment. You're poisoning. Yeah, you're poisoning the world. Yeah, and, f- and disease. we see it all the time. And it, what's really interesting is you'll, you'll notice, like I remember... Yeah, I ran across a really well-known speaker, coach, you know, in the industry, and I saw her speak, and she was doing something for women and came up to me afterwards, and I was very interested. I was like, well, maybe I should go to this thing. And then later that night, I saw her at the hotel. She looked through me like she didn't see me at all, didn't recognize me, and she was yelling at the desk staff. And I was like, uh, no. Hmm. So there absolutely needs to be this cohesive way. Now, sometimes we just get into situations where we get angry and upset, and that's human. But this was more of she wasn't being aligned of like how she was showing that she was. So it wasn't a true expression of her nature. And that's not going to work. The truth, the really honest internal belief of wishing someone well will create that for you. Because the thoughts and the beliefs are as important as the words. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. There's blessings. Blessings, blessings, blessings everywhere. So what do you do? I mean, look, again, this is not about rolling over. I I certainly don't want any of our listeners to be like, well, I'm going to give up my opinion. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to, like, agree with everybody. No, no, no. Like, you have to have an opinion. It's so vital. It's so important. However, there's a certain sense of wishing others well And wishing them increase, just a simple respect. And and even those people that have really annoyed you or pressed your buttons, it's amazing what can happen when you wish them well. We'll check out that train of truth coming by right now. Right on by. And these are the hardest people to do that for, right? Someone's really annoyed you. The last thing you think you want to do is wish them to get everything they want. But when you do that, you'll be surprised at how the attitude between you and that other person begins to heal and really shift in a magical way or they just don't bother you as much yeah it's it's one of the one of the secrets to just shifting the energy of a situation it is a secret to shifting the energy yeah nobody really it's not the go-to it's it's very counterintuitive as a matter of fact because when you meet resistance what is your first reaction is to resist to resist, to yeah. fight back, and look what's demonstrated and shown to us 24-7 through the media, um, quite possibly through maybe some family arguments, through school, through like it's all over the place. The planet is rampant with this. It's just a contentious behavior and belief. And so nobody's real. Well, you are. We are. We're looking at the secret teaching of shift it, really shift it, really bless. I mean, The control of the mind is phenomenal and what it can create and and the attitude from which you can really radiate outwards from just really having this deliberate thought process is incredible. Yeah, I I think that's one of the other reasons just by the way that that the we have that tendency to look out and to look at others and and, and it's because it is terrifying in a certain way to just sit with ourselves Mm. to realize you know, that you are a hundred percent responsibility for the creation of your world Mm. and your life. And, uh, and that's not an easy place to sit. Yeah. It's really not, you know, so it's, it's become so much more, uh, entertaining and so much more engaging to look at other people and to talk about them. Yeah. To do the blame and the victim thing, like, oh, this happened to me and people did that and whatever. Well, let, let me share this. There's another, really interesting high teaching that, you know, it's easy to do that, actually. It is so easy to follow the herd and that life sucks. This happened to me. I'm never going to get my way, but it's useless. And that's all it is. It's following the herd of everything's wrong. Nothing's going to work. This person is angry. That person, this country, that country, jump off that wagon because When we just follow the herd like that, not only is it useless, it means we're not using our own intellects to observe and to make our own honest decisions and contemplations. 
And we're certainly not positioning ourselves to shift the energy, as you said, in any way towards a higher way of being, doing, and having. Yeah. Yeah. I had this really interesting um, exchange. It was somebody who uh, was uh, wanting, really, really, really wanting. So they said really, really wanting to mm-hmm. enroll in uh, in Energy Mastery, actually. And uh, great, put a plan, plan in place. We're ready to go. You know, here's the day that uh, that your first payment's going to charge. Great, let's mm-hmm. go. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, you know, I, all of a sudden, like something happened, and I don't have the money and stuff. I'm like, well, mm-hmm. and then and then there was this blame. This is the interesting part. Like, mm-hmm. I get it; those things happen. Right. But here was the blaming part. Was like, oh, well, if this person had paid me on time and this and this, and they listed like three different things <laughs> and said, you know, then I'd have the money. And I was like, oh, so I shared with them actually with this. You know, and I, I always see it as an opportunity to help a person take another step and mm-hmm. and and I just shared uh you know if you really want to shift this with your income the very first thing that you have to stop doing is blaming other people you have to take full responsibility for the creation yes. of your income yes. and, and and this is the best part and it was so telling to me is that she was entirely blind to it totally mm-hmm. blind she's like I don't do that I, I don't do that I totally take responsibility and then I I sent back I, I said, well, okay, well, just about 15 minutes ago, you texted this to me. And Aww. I copied and pasted her text to her. And that was the last I heard of her. Aww, <laughs> poor girl. Or I guy. feel, you know, but what are you going to do? You hey, know? It's sh- shine the light because hopefully she'll be like, oh my gosh. And there's, look, there's no shame. There's no guilt in, in having something revealed that we can change. And I think that's another piece. Everyone is like, don't beat yourself up. Don't Don't be like, oh my gosh, I've been doing this for years or not doing that. This is a golden opportunity. Like this moment right here and now is the moment that you actually co-create with the, you know, ultimate universal plane of existence. You co-create your life with God, spirit, whatever your words are. This is your karma in the creation. So it's actually, to me, very exciting that these teachings are getting out there and that we have this understanding or we're willing to contemplate the understanding that as you're thinking and the attitude and, and the way you're radiating, you know, as we talked about our podcast just a few weeks ago on prosperity, will really bring back that kind of experience and opportunity and in people into your life. Really, you send out a beautiful thought and it comes back to you multiplied by so much that we, we can't even realize. And yet so many people are focused on sending out the negative thoughts. That seems to be the go-to. I have a question for you about mm. this, and because I think this can get confusing um, in actual practice. Yeah. Because you speak about only speaking good about other people, right? Like only, only speaking about pe- other people in a certain way, and that makes sense. If you mm-hmm. want more of that, especially like you want to put more of that out there, you need to right. give in order to receive. Mm-hmm. Uh, where does that become uh, delusional? That's great. Sort of like the happy, happy. You yeah. Mean? Or yeah. Where, where does that mean? Like ignore. And you see this now just in, in more specific situations where you have a really destructive person in your life and then you keep looking at them and saying like, oh, but, you know, oh, they have such potential or, or they can change yeah, or no, they have the, all it. these good qualities, but they're, you know, they're total like total disaster yeah. and totally destructive to your life as well. So like, like how do you yeah, reconcile it's such that? a great question. I mean, number one, that intellect has to be in place to discern what is this person in your life? And it's not about, oh, they have potential. Oh, they have possibility. It's about, I wish for you increase in your love and your money and your health. It is an honest, like, I hope this happens for you. And then even while doing that, if that person is toxic, you can end the relationship, the friendship, the partnership. It doesn't mean that you string along all these people in your life that are bringing you down. And it doesn't mean that you're happy, happy, and you're thinking, oh, one day. They might not. That's their gig. But the point is that you can you pause all of the negative stuff going out and you wish them, bless them well, and then you make a very um, intelligent decision as to which way you're going to go in your life. Mm. Makes sense? It does, yeah. I think if I understand correctly, the core of what you're, the core piece of what you're saying there is really 
Uh, it's taking yourself and the judgment out of it in order to make a clear assessment, which I know we've talked about many times yeah. on the show. Yeah, is, I mean, is that it? Or, or is yeah, there... I mean, judgment assessment, you know, it, it, judgment, we are, you know, I get it. Some people are like, well, you're judging all the time. I like to say we're assessing all the time. Constant discernment, constant discernment. Let's say that when judgment becomes criticizing, then you feel that internal like yuckiness. Then you know you're entangled, right? So it, it's coming back in you. That's like one of those things when you're constantly in critic criticism, it's coming back to you. It's depleting your own element of joy. It's depleting your cheerfulness. It's depleting your ability to see your vision and really bring back more goodness into your life. Uh, well, yeah, exactly. I mean, those are the exact seeds that you're planting. Mm -hmm. And so on a certain level, I think every human understands that natural law of cause and effect and, yes. and, 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 and we reaping what we sow is ingrained on a cellular level. Yes. And so on a certain level, everybody knows that as you put something out there, you know that that's what it gets. So that's where you create fear. Right. Like, of course, you're going to be afraid of uh, losing, of of being rejected or, mm -hmm. or all these other things when that is exactly what you're putting out. Yeah. I mean, that's where those fears come up. You're putting it out. There's an internal flicker and somewhere in you, that's ignited and you then experience this worry, this anxiety, this fear. So this ability to wish upon others, to present upon others to the planet, this divine law of increase will begin to squelch that worry, put out that spark, that fire of fear, and then reignite or like you said, Nick, to just reprogram your inner being of expecting um, in increase in prosperity in your own life, taking action for that, and just holding a completely different attitude of being and doing and different ways of having. That's all outside the box. All right? outside it's the box. It's all outside the box. But it's so doable, people. We can do this. I know we can. Yeah. It's interesting. It just, it's, it's such a big topic uh, when I look at... Uh, I think this was, you know, personally speaking, I think this was one of the biggest misses, a misunderstanding of this and a misuse of, of words was one of the things that created so much chaos around the last election. Oh. You know, interesting, though, to, to think about it for a second, though, is like uh, it was all it was based so much on gossip about about oh, people false news you mean it, not even false news it was just it, people taking this side or that yeah. side and then if they were on this side then they had to make that side wrong and if right. they were on the other side they yeah. had to make that side wrong yeah. and what that is is gossip it's it really just gossip is. and it was centered on all the wrong things like yes the character of this human being that is going to lead uh lead our country is important exactly super super important like yes it's important to talk about character uh, but to talk about it in a way that does not uh, have that uh, judgment and mm -hmm. criticism about mm -hmm. it rather than uh, the, the true sense of discernment. Exactly. You know, it's like make an empowered choice. This is what I'm thinking is right for me. This is who I'm aligned with without completely demoralizing another human. It, I. It's just, yeah, I mean, that whole election thing was really quite sad and well it continued to me in my mind it continues to be sad because there has been no real change in the dialogue yeah, since right. then to me it, that was our op and we still have it it's not like it's gone for good but that was our big opportunity it was a major it was a opportunity. huge opportunity for yeah. everybody to start having a real conversation yeah. and and immediately it just devolved into into I all know. this hurt and bad feeling and blame and judgment and all this other stuff and and it's it led right back where we started and and it's interesting because i wonder you know, how many people when they had an opinion, I just feel like everybody has the right to their opinion. Then there was this fear of what other people were going to say or they were going to be cut off. And, and so it ignited this. It was just a big fat mess. Not the law of increase, people. Definitely the law of decrease. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and every single one of us was the loser for it. Oh, Totally. It, it, it diminished the level of conversation that we're yeah. having. It, mm -hmm. it dumbed down so many different things. Yeah. It, and it poisoned in so many ways. It poisoned the minds of so many people yeah. 
to then go into that fight or flight of this right. side versus that side. And I need that other side needs to be wrong so that I can be right. 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 And, and, uh, yeah, I get it. And, and the it's racial so, hate and so, uh, devastating, really it's so devastating. Destructive. And, and this is, this is something now on just kind of a last note here to, I think, recognize the gravity of this and just how important this is in, in life is to realize that no matter if you ever, ever turn on a news station, Mm. Right. Or or if you ever engage in a conversation like that, it doesn't matter. You are still exposed to that same level of toxicity because it's in the energetics of every person that's walking around. Oh, truly. So let's do a little experiment so that we don't leave it on. <laughs> like, a, <laughs> Well, that wasn't so great. No, I would love an experiment for everyone listening to take one week of your life, because I'm pretty sure if you take the week and you do this, you're not going to want to stop. And it's going to become a forever more way of expressing and, and seeing the world. And that is really when someone's, you know, pressing your buttons, or you're upset with them. It doesn't mean you have to agree. And certainly if someone's hurt you, it doesn't mean that's okay. But wish them God's blessing, the universe's wealth, whatever your words are, wish something upon them. And as well, just when you're in your day and day life, I, yeah, I look at it this way. I put this on Facebook as well. Be positive and bold in your words. Because if you can't be bold and positive, why be anything? Like why say anything, right? Be strong and bold and be deliberate and be meticulous. Do your best to be positive even if it's in disagreement, does that make sense? It does. Yeah, yeah, I think that's an awesome exercise. And that was that was actually what I was going to say, too, is uh, and I, I love that you just jumped in with that. That's so great because uh, it really does have to start with the individual. Uh, yes. You have to clean it up in yourself. First, oh, my gosh. You know, and clean up with you and your family. I mean, think about it. If you speak to your kids differently, if they're acting up or you're going through teenage years or whatever, and you really think and even speak and wish them the increase of something good they're going to feel that rather than, oh, you didn't do this, Sally, or hey, you know, Joe, this was really bad. or I, That doesn't feel good. And yes, our kids need boundaries and understandings. They need to be taught. But this is one of the best. This is the highest teaching when we're giving to each other and then receiving back. And it just, it really will, like you said, Nick, change it one person at a time. That's the only way. Mm -hmm. That's the only, if you try to change it upside down, you know, and try to change it all out there right. before you actually really change that in yourself, like you'll wind up, you'll wind up being, you know, the vegan who judges <laughs> all the people who meet eat um, and, yeah. and create a lot of that's hate. Like, worst. But no, but that's exactly what that yeah. creates. It, and yeah. that's, that's why it's upside down. Exactly. But when that starts within you now, like, here's the cool part. Like, this is the most exciting part to me is that when you do it the right side up and really start with you, mm -hmm. uh, not only do you, are you the immediate benefactor of that. Mm -hmm. You will have more peace. You will have more ease. You will have more prosperity. Right. Guaranteed. Right. Uh, number two is that you continue to be that um, sanctuary mm. within a chaotic world because mm -hmm. you have that within yourself. You don't oh, have to go sanctuary. anywhere to find that. I love that word. Uh, but that peace of mind is something that you're going to take with you everywhere you go. And, and then beyond that, the people that you touch every day. And yeah. there are a certain circle of people that you touch just virtually every day with your uh, thoughts and your words and, and, and your actions. And those people will be the benefactors too, mm -hmm. which is going to create that consistent, uh, more consistent upward trend for everybody. Right. Right. right? And, and that's how it works. But you, you, and, but you can't ever get beyond the space where you have to deal with yourself right. first. Right. You always got to deal with yourself first. Yeah, totally. Be the sanctuary. Be the change. Go tweet that, baby. That's awesome. Well, there and you have it. And report back. Honestly, like, let's take this experiment and run with it because truly, 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 I want, I know Nick does, we want for all of you to experience life in the most magnificent, miraculous way. And when you start giving that out, it's going to come back. And for many of you, you've already witnessed that. You're already having a beautiful life. So let's just take it up a notch. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Kizma. Thank you. Peace. Namaste.